This video explains grid navigation in depth, for ESA ATPL general navigation, and we are starting right now. Hello and welcome to Answering ATPL. The focus of this channel is to provide explanations for ESA ATPL's examination subjects and other aviation related stuff. Let me know, in the comment section below if you are currently taking ATPL theoretical examination. The scope of this video are The need for grid navigation Grid constructions Basic calculation principles And, solution methods As you can see on the screen all the meridians are converging towards poles. The amount of convergence is higher closer to the pole. This phenomenon poses a problem for navigation at higher latitude. For example, an aircraft needs to fly from point A located at 70 degrees north 70 degree west to point B located at 70 degrees north 70 degree east. The track with the closest distance between these two positions is marked by the green line and known as Great Circle Track. Details explanation on Great Circle is in another video, link to the video is available on the top right corner of the screen and description section. As you can see in the animation the compass reading is continually changing when we travel from A to B. To solve the problem of changing true course we can use rum line track represent by the red line. However, this track is further compared to great circle track, thus it is uneconomical. The other way to solve this problem is by superimposing grid and fly by referring to the grid north. The aircraft can maintain a constant grid track. On the screen, grid is represented by the light blue lines. As animated on the screen, the aircraft keep constant grid track of 090 degrees. Grid navigation is the method used to navigate at higher latitude for an aircraft to fly a great circle track with a constant track by referring to grid north. Grid line is constructed by taking a reference meridian usually the prime meridian, but they can also be other meridian chose as the reference. In your examination, you might encounter questions where reference meridian other than prime meridian is used. From the reference meridian parallel line is drawn at an equidistant from the reference grid to mark the grid line. On the screen is a portion of polar stereographic chart. The direction of the meridian upward is the true north marked by red arrow line. Zero degrees longitude or the prime meridian is the reference meridian represented by the blue line, and the parallel line of this reference meridian is drawn on each longitude at 55 degrees latitude to represent the grid. Next. I will draw a line from A to B. We will focus our attention at point A, prime meridian and point B. We can see that both true track and grid track is 90 degrees at prime meridian. At point A, true track is the angle between true north and track, and it is 80 degrees. And the grid track is the angle between grid north and track, and it is 90 degrees. Whereas at point B, true track is 100 degrees and the grid track is 90 degrees. Other information that we can extract from this diagram are at point A convergence is east, and at point B convergence is west. Thus, we can conclude that west of reference convergence east, and east of reference convergence west. From the value of true north and grid north at point A and point B we can conclude that convergence east, true east, and convergence west, true best. This diagram can be simplified into this diagram. The top half part of the circle represents Northern Hemisphere. The bottom half portion of the circle represents Southern Hemisphere. Left half portion of the circle represents position west of the reference. Right half portion of the circle represents position east of reference. The letter E W W E refer to convergence where E is east and W is west. Now we will look at the relation between true north and grid north using the graphical method. This is the picture of the Earth if we are looking from above North Pole. The white line is the graticule. This is the simplified version of the previous diagram. All meridians are converging towards the North Pole, and its direction toward North Pole represented by the red chevron is the true north. For this diagram, the reference meridian is 0 degrees longitude or the prime meridian. As you might notice I placed 0 degrees longitude or the prime meridian at the bottom of the diagram. This is done to ensure the grid north pointing toward the top of the diagram. The convention of drawing this type of diagram is that for polar stereographic chart originate from the North Pole, the reference meridian will always be on the bottom of the diagram. If the reference datum is the anti-meridian the diagram will look like this. 
you just rotate your drawing by 180 degrees, to place the anti-meridian at the bottom. Now we will look at the polar stereographic originate from the south pole, same as for the north pole example 0 degrees longitude of prime meridian will be the reference meridian. As you might notice this time, the 0 degrees longitude or the prime meridian is located on top of the chart. The reason is the same as previous, it is because at south pole the direction of true north is outward from the south pole. Thus to ensure grid north pointing toward the top of the diagram the reference meridian need to be placed at the top of the diagram. If the reference datum is the anti-meridian the diagram will look like this. Now that we know how to draw the diagram let look at how to use it. For this I will use north polar stereographic chart with prime meridian as the reference meridian. On the diagram there are several aircraft, we will calculate the true heading and grid heading of the aircraft using the diagram. For the first aircraft, the direction of true north is toward the north pole. True heading is the angle between true north and nose of the aircraft. Thus it is 180 degrees. To find the grid heading we draw a parallel line from the reference meridian. The grid heading is the angle between grid north represented by the green line and nose of the aircraft, and it is 225 degrees. For the second aircraft, true north is the direction of the meridian toward the north pole. Thus, the true heading is 270 degrees and the grid heading is 360 degrees. Having shown two examples, I suggest you pause the video and calculate true heading and grid heading for aircraft 3 and 4, the answer will be given after you resume the video. The third aircraft true heading is 225 degrees, and grid heading is 90 degrees. And for the fourth aircraft, true heading is 45 degrees and grid heading is 360 degrees. There are three methods to solve grid navigation problems. 1. Using formula. 2. Using table. 3. Drawing method. To help me explain all three solution method, we will use a sample question. An aircraft is using a south polar grid based on prime meridian in position 75 degrees south 20 degrees west. The grid heading is 210 degrees. What is the true heading? Now we will look at the first method by using the formula. On the top right corner of the screen is the extract of the question. To use the formula method. First, we will need the EWWE diagram. Zero degrees or a prime meridian is the reference meridian, so we mark the center line zero degrees. The aircraft is in the southern hemisphere, thus, we will only need the bottom portion of the diagram. Aircraft is positioned at 20 degrees west longitude, 20 degrees west is to the left of prime meridian. Thus, convergence is 20 degrees. Remember, for polar stereographic chart convergence is equal to change of longitude. From EWWE diagram it is clear that the aircraft lies within the west region. Thus, convergence is 20 degrees west. The formula for calculating true heading is True heading equal to grid heading plus or minus convergence. Remember the idiom. Convergence west. True best. This means the formula that will be used is True heading equal to grid heading plus convergence. True heading equal to 210 plus 20. True heading equal to 230 degrees. For the second method, we will use a table. This method also requires the use of EWWE diagram. I am not going to repeat the procedure. I just going to take the result from the first method. Convergence equal to 20 west. The table that will be used is the CDMVT table. For those that have taken instruments subject, you might be familiar with this table. An addition of CG that is convergence and grid is added to the far right of the table. To remember this table, we can use the following mnemonic. Can dead man vote twice? CG. This table is filled from right to left. East is written as positive and west is written as negative. For this question, we will only be interested in these three columns. Now we fill up convergence column, 20 west. And grid column, 210. As mentioned before west is negative with respect to this table. Since we are going from right to left, instead of left to right. 210 is added to 20 given true heading 230 degrees. If we recheck our work true heading of 230 minus the 20 degree convergence will give 210 degrees grid heading. The final method to solve grid navigation problems is by using the drawing method. Remember this method can only be used for the polar stereographic question. The first step, draw a circle. This circle represents the latitude of the aircraft. Second step, mark the four cardinal heading by aligning a square protector in the center of the circle that had been drawn. Next, 
Mark the poles, in this question, the South Pole and mark the meridian. Since this question used South Polar Stereographic, the reference meridian needs to be marked at the top of the diagram and mark the other three points. Next bring back the square protector. Align the middle of the protector with the middle of the circle. Next, you need to ensure that the protector north align with the zero degrees meridian line. Next, mark the longitude of the aircraft. As you can see 90 degrees west is on the left side of the diagram thus, 20 degrees west is 20 degrees to the left of zero degrees longitude. Draw a line from the center of the circle to a peripheral 20 degrees from zero degrees longitude. Next, bring the center of the protector the marked position of the aircraft. You need to ensure that the north-south line of the protector is parallel to the reference meridian line. The question gives the grid heading of 210 degrees. Locate 210 on the protector and mark it, this represent the grid heading of the aircraft. To find the true heading, we need to align the protector with true north. Since the center of the circle is south pole, we know that the direction of true north, is away from the south pole. Now we can read the answer. True north is 230 degrees. If you want to learn more about ATPL or aviation, start now by hitting the round subscribe icons. Also, if you have any questions or comments about any ATPL or aviation related problems, you can leave them in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you, next time.